about our ocean and the sea life that lives in the Gulf of Maine by exploring, observing, and listening. And I want you guys to all take a look because these guys have a particular name, chain cat sharks. So if you look at the pattern on their body, do you guys notice that they have these nice dark chains all over their body? The Seacoast Science Center at Odeon State Park has been promoting its mission of protecting our natural resources for 25 years. 25 years, it's an enormous milestone uh, to, to have started as a very small institution years and years ago and grown to what we are today. It's a testament to everybody who's been here and, and, and worked on it uh, over the years. We take kids, we get their feet wet, we take them out onto the rocks in the rocky shore. Um, they also might be able to get their hands wet in our touch tanks inside. Definitely one of the most popular exhibits at the Science Center is the indoor tide pool touch tank. No fish, but we did see like these snails and we did see a mussel. And the water was cold. I'd say um, people spend on average about 12 minutes at the touch tank, which is huge. Uh, for, you know, considering all the other enticing exhibits around. Um, the live animal exhibits are hugely popular as well. 26,000 school children pass through the Science Center every year from New Hampshire, Maine, and Massachusetts. But the center is really for all ages. It's mission to educate people about how we are connected to the sea what the salt marshes and tide pools mean to plant and sea life. I like the tide pools out there. They were um, pretty cool. It's been cool hunting for really cool rocks and um, crabs and things like that. Well, we went to the tide pools. We saw some, we saw sea urchin and some sea lettuce. Ocean education is what we do. So we educate to motivate. Uh, for the past 25 years, we've been teaching people about the ocean and coastal ocean systems. We want people to understand, um, we want to raise awareness about the ocean system as a whole, um, about the interconnectedness of that system with other systems and with our own human health. The tanks are filled with a rich variety of fish and mammals that live in the Gulf of Maine, seahorses, the slowest moving creatures in the ocean, a large rare blue lobster and a hermit crab to name a few. I learned um, that the uh, crabs, I didn't know like where the crabs lived. I didn't know they lived under rocks and stuff, so that was pretty cool. Another popular member of the team is Tofu, a humpback whale with an interesting tail. Tofu was about a two-year-old uh, humpback. She was the victim of a ship strike in Boston Harbor. She's near and dear to us. We're able to tell that story um, through the lens of Tofu about, you know, the hazards of that happen out in the ocean environment. Whales usually like, like to eat like other other like sea creatures sometimes. And then their whale behaviors, they, that they, when they meet another whale that they know, they, they get next to each other and snuggle. Seacoast Science Center has a team of naturalists that lead kids and adults on hikes through the state park. The state of New Hampshire Parks Department is a key partner in this venture. Things that happen to the coastal infrastructure here, whether it's the Port of Portsmouth or Oceanside properties, will impact their seafood, will impact their recreation should they come to the seacoast, may impact the availability of goods and, and services as this environment in both an environmental sense and a commercial sense change. Take a trip deep into the sea and learn how ocean exploration has developed. You can direct a remote operating vehicle trying to recover wreckage on the ocean floor or reel in a big one. The Seacoast Science Center is also home to the Marine Mammal Rescue Team. This is the crew that gets called out when a seal is stranded. They led the effort to remove Snowplow, the humpback whale that washed in rye last summer. 
Marine biologist Ashley Stokes says spring is the time of year when harbor seal pups are often found on the beach. She advises people to keep their distance. It's natural for the mothers to leave their pups on the, on the beach or on the rocky shore to nurse. They'll leave their pups, they'll go off and they'll fish for food. But when you see a fluffy young seal on the beach, it's, it's just natural to want to approach them and want to do what you can to help. But really the, the thing that, most, that everybody should do is to call us. Uh, we'll get a trained responder out there, see if mom is in the area. Uh, you can often just kind of scan the ocean uh, on the horizon and just watch. They'll, they'll often pop their heads up and check to see how the pup is doing. Uh, they don't go too far away. To celebrate its 25th birthday, the center's offering a number of new exhibits and programs through September, all aimed at engaging young people about how we are connected to the ocean and how what we do on land can affect the marine ecosystems. Kids come back. Teachers are committed to us, school, school districts, school programs are committed to us, and we have a membership base and support throughout the seacoast in particular that validates and endorses uh, the work that we do here at the Science Center and have done for many years. Kind of tells me we're on the right track. It's good. That's a great feeling. That's a great feeling.